myself and I'll tell a little bit about what SSP is. We have a panel of recent alumni here to tell you about SSP from their point of view and help answer questions. So my name is Amy Belote and I'm the operations director at SSP and so I'm involved in um, admissions and hiring faculty and kind of the logistics for how things run over the summer and I will try and answer some of the more technical questions about applying and we have a panel of alumni here to tell you about their experiences, um, so more about what the program is like. I'm going to start with a little bit of an intro, um, just some of the basics. So we are entirely online for 2021. There's no in-person option, and there are two research projects, as always. There's astrophysics and biochemistry. We will have three programs in astrophysics and two programs in biochemistry. And again, it's all online, no in-person option. The application deadline is March 5th, so that's about two weeks from now. And it is possible, to, the application is a little bit complicated, but it is possible to do it in, in two weeks. It's possible to do it in one week if you're, you're motivated. So there's still plenty of time to apply. If you haven't begun already, it's not too late. Um, so I'd like to turn things over to the panelists. They're each gonna introduce themselves and tell a little bit about what SSP was like for them. So Juliana, do you wanna start? Um, yeah, um, so my name is Juliana. Um, I did SSP astrophysics this past summer at CUB, and um, it was like a really great experience. Um, it was the first time I had done a program virtually, and even though it was very different, um, I made a lot of new friends. And some people aren't comfortable with the fact that it might be virtual this year again instead of in person. But the greatest thing about it being virtual is that you get to meet more SS peers. It's not only in the CUB campus that I made friends, but in the NMT campus, even um, I have friends in biochem. And it's really a great experience where everyone really just supports each other no matter what. And you might be a little scared because it's like a new thing and you might not feel like the smartest person in the room, but it really teaches you a lot about yourself and like other people, especially in the field of science. So, um, did I call someone else? Yeah. Okay, um, Manuel. Hi, my name is Manuel. Uh, I did uh, the summer science program in 2019 at the Colorado campus. Um, I was actually on the fence between applying to astrophysics or biochemistry, but at the end I decided to go to astrophysics. Um, so if you have any questions about um, if you're unsure of which one you should apply to because you just loves all science in general, um, you, can always you can always go ahead and ask that and I can try and help you with that because I, like I said, I just love all science. Um, I'll go with Bolu. Is that, you, is that you saying your name? Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Bolu and I'm from Minneapolis and I did SSP 2020 in Iowa in Indiana University in biochemistry. And my most favorite memory was the talent show because like by the time we had the talent show, we all were used to each other in the scientific setting, collaborating on the P sets and the research project. It was nice to like take a break and just work with each other like in a fun setting, like outside of science. Cause like we were able to like get to know each other like as academics in like the science setting, but seeing other people's talents was a really fun thing, and, like a nice break from the science. Then I'll pass it on to Jenny. Hi everyone, um, my name is Jenny from Harrisburg, PA, and I did SSP in biochem this last summer at Purdue. So I would say my favorite just general part of SSP was just like all the people that I met. Everyone there is just genuinely so interesting, intelligent, and just like really kind. I knew when I went there, everyone there would be like really smart. Um, but I loved the collaborative um, aspect of it that even though everyone was really intelligent, we weren't like competing against each other or anything like that. Everyone was there to help one another and to just, you know, strive together. And I would say my favorite, like, specific memory was also the talent show, like, Bolu. Um, because, as I said, I mean, everyone's really smart, but also, like, really talented and, like, a variety of different things. We had people that were great at music and great at art and, like, kind of comedy things. It was just, like, all around great experience. So, great for science and also just, like, meeting new people. So, yeah, it was a really good time. And I'll pass it to Will. Hi everyone, my name is Will. Um, I did, I was at New Mexico Tech um, for the online campus and I did astrophysics. 
Um, I would say that my favorite part of SSP was probably, along with everyone else, the people. Um, I still uh, am in contact with several of my SSP friends and we hang out um, online a lot. Um, I think a, a really big part of SSP was um, the collaboration, not just with um, like the academics and just like the activities on campus, but also with the fact that even outside of the program, we connected on different projects that we were interested in, on different um, research opportunities, um, help with opportunities and uh, programs in other areas as well in general. Um, I think SSP is like a very welcoming community where a lot of people are super supportive of each other and they help each other with um, literally anything. And so that was a really, really, really um, great part of SSP, like the support system, both during the program and after the program, especially with the alumni network. So I'll pass it on to Mateo. Hi, my name is Mateo. I'm from California and I attended SSP at the Indiana campus with BOLU this last summer. So I would say the thing that surprised me most about SSP was how down to earth everyone was. Everyone's obviously really smart, but they also have time to enjoy themselves and we all connect. It wasn't just everyone studying all the time. Um, uh, another great thing about SSP for me, my favorite memory was the last night. It's a tradition to stay up the last night and just talk to people after you're done with your research paper. And I think me and only a few other people were actually able to survive the whole night. But it was a really fun time to kind of finish off SS SSP. All right, thank you everyone. And I'm sure we'll come up with a lot, uh, many more questions. If you are attending the webinar uh, and want to put a question either in the chat or in the Q&A box, you're welcome to do that. Um, we do have a question in the chat. And while you all are um, thinking about your answers to that question, before we get to that, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that came in at registration. Um, so the goals, someone asked about the goals of the program and um, what the research project is about. So participants are not coming up with their own research project in these two topic areas. The, the project is, um, is, is laid out, but they are doing the work in terms of um, designing the, the experiments and the protocols. There is work to be done to learn about the academic concepts that underlie the entire project. And then they, the participants do research from beginning to end. And being online, it does remove that hands-on data collection. So the people in biochemistry were not in the lab uh, using pipettes as they would have been in person, but that's really the only component that was missing. There's a lot to research other than just that point of data collection. So there was all the experiment design beforehand, and all the analysis that happened after. And in the five weeks, um, the participants go from beginning to end in the research project. They work collaboratively in teams of three with help from the TAs and the faculty. And at the end, there's a, a research paper, a, a report that's written. It's not original research that's going to be published for each team individually because it's all part of this larger project. But the goal of the program is not so much to train astrophysicists or train biochemists, it's to provide an uh, immersion into research. In high school, you're learning about science. At SSP, you're doing science. You're doing the experiments and learning about that, that whole process and learning about working in a team. So it's not about getting the best grade. It's about uh, learning to work together in a challenging environment. And SSP is intentionally difficult. We give you more work than you can possibly do by yourself in the time frame allowed, but you don't have to do it yourself. You have your teammates to count on, everyone else in your program. You have TAs who are supporting you and you have the faculty who are there to help. So it's, it's supposed to be hard, but it's also supposed to be um, in a, an environment that allows you to do hard things. Um, so really the only thing that we lost was that hands-on data collection, either at the telescope or in the lab. And we didn't do any field trips online. We're thinking about whether a virtual field trip might be possible, but we maintained everything else that's part of SSP. You guest speakers, the talent show, as a couple people mentioned, the structure of working in teams of three, um, interacting with the TAs, there's social time built in with the TAs. So it's not just learn uh, in a lecture, do your homework and that's it. There's a lot more to it than that. Um, someone asked about the schedule and online, uh, we know that it will be about eight hours of scheduled time each day. That's what it was last year. We don't know specific hours yet, 
those eight hours will be spread out in a couple of blocks of time throughout the day. Um, and we ask that participants not have other commitments. Um, you shouldn't also be taking a class or also be working. Um, it might be possible, you know, to squeeze some time in, but it really kind of maxes out your day with that eight scheduled hours and then whatever other work you need to do on the side. Um, and one other question before we go over to the uh, alumni panel. Uh, someone asked about how faculty are selected to participate in the program. Most of our faculty return year after year. And when we have new faculty, it's often just by word of mouth. Someone knows someone who would, another faculty person who would be a good fit to teach at SSP. It's really a unique program. It takes a lot out of faculty. It takes a lot out of everyone who participates. It's very intense. So it requires a, a certain type of person who wants to teach in this environment and can dedicate that uh, time for five and five weeks in the summer to do only SSP. So on our website, you can see the list of faculty from last year. There are a few new fa faculty people, but um, most of everyone who was there last year mostly is coming back. So um, you can see who those people are. And we are always looking for new faculty, but it's uh, not quite as easy as just putting out a, a, you know, a job notice. It does take a special kind of person. So word of mouth is really how we have found most of our faculty. All right, so I'm going to pause and turn it over to the panel. Uh, the question in the chat that came through was, what was the most perspective shifting experience you had at SSP? And also, what was your favorite experience with mentors and professors? So uh, I go ahead and take a stab at both of those questions or just one of them. Uh, well, I think SSP overall was very perspective shifting. Um, because before SSP, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in college in my free time, just outside of class. But then I discovered that research is what I really want to do. And it's re I really enjoy it. And I'm really focusing on which colleges allow me to pursue research. And I think in that manner, it allowed me to find what I wanted to do. Um, what was my favorite experience with mentors or professors? I would say at night, sometimes we would have, we'd have some free time when we'd finish our work. And then we could just play games with them. And I mean, they're all pretty young, uh, like right out of college. So we can still like talk to them and have fun with them. And I think that's really great. I also agree that for me, it was seeing, because I'd never done any research before um, SSP. And so doing it made me realize like, oh, this is something that I really um, want to do. Because I kind of saw it as like this, I didn't really know what research was, honestly, you know, other than what you see in like TV and movies, I guess. But like doing it for myself, I realized that this is enjoyable and it's like not as hard as I thought it once was. So it's something that I want to continue in college. And um, for my favorite experience with mentors and um, uh, like program people, <laughs> sorry, I would say I think we played a lot of pranks on them. Uh, so that was a lot of fun <laughs> because uh, they they're everyone is like really just fun and interesting so they, they can take jokes so it's always been, uh, fun to joke around with them. I'd probably say like, the most perspective shifting experience was like just struggling through like the problem sets and like the problems we were like going through while we were working because like in like your normal science classes like sometimes you might not have like the same struggle as like in a real world research project like in this project like we had to struggle through problems we came up like work with our teammates because we worked in our group of three like just working together with them and also with the mentors and the professors like working with them through the problems was really like perspective shifting uh this might be obvious to some people but it kind of wasn't to me um i remember at ssp i was just really intimidated at first because there were some kids who had taken like Calc 3 um, before coming. There was one who was doing a side project with Fourier transforms. Um, you know, like I could go on about how smart a lot of these kids were. And I, I was just really intimidated by that because like I had taken Calc AB before coming to SSP, um, which at my school was like, whoa, you're taking calc. But then, like, there's all these kids who have already taken, like, sophomore, junior level, um, sophomore, junior college level 
math and physics cl physics classes and I just could not relate to that and at first I was really intimidated but then as I got to know them much better and got to see them um, as a person and also uh, just collaborate with them on our work I realized like these are just normal people just like everyone else and um, I feel like that was very perspective shifting I, I don't really know what else to say about that but I just I thought that was a good experience to have. Um, I also agree with that. I think a lot of the people at SSP are really good at what they do. And um, it's very like, I, I was very awestruck by like how much experience a lot of people had in like math and science prior to SSP. Um, but the fact still remained that um, most people didn't or weren't able to do, including me, weren't able to do the problem sets by ourselves. And so I really think that like um, emphasize the importance of like collaboration in SSP. Um, the fact that um, we all have like our own strengths and our own weaknesses and like working with each other to like balance out those strengths and weaknesses is very important in the program. Um, I went into the program not knowing that much about uh, like astronomy. I had never taken um, like an astrophysics course in my life. And when I left the program, I um, knew a lot more about astrophysics. And so um, I think just in having the pro uh, being part of the program really changed the way that I saw um, um, like being good at something. Um, lots of people like aren't good at something at the beginning, but um, when you get help from someone else and like support, um, I think it means a lot more than people think it does at the beginning. And so with that support, I was able to like learn a lot more than I thought that I would have learned at in such a short period of time. And also, sorry, um, my favorite experience with um, the mentors and the professors was just, um, we would have like a breakout from conversations um, during our work play um, blocks. And so we would um, like talk about a bunch of random things like from politics to science and like debate and stuff like that. Um, and also the support that they gave us. Um, I know one time I was like struggling with my um, code and one of the TAs took the time out of her day to like walk me through the entire process. And I got a much clearer picture after that. And so there's a lot of like personal attention too, if you need it. Um, people aren't, um, or at the beginning, people might be a little bit shy to ask for help but by the, um, like the middle of the program, everybody was asking for help and it's something that's really encouraged. All right, thank you all. We're getting some questions about applying um, and what type of people get into SSP. And so I'll try and answer a few of those questions at once. So um, all, the, all of our panelists have gotten into SSP, but a lot of people who get into SSP aren't sure why, you know, they, they were certainly qualified to be there, but what is, that, what is that something that we're looking for? And a lot of it boils down to kind of the, the vague answer, and you'll hear this in colleges too, it's about fit. Um, our admissions committee is looking for people who are a good fit for SSP and SSP is a good fit for them. So you do not have to have qualifications beyond having met the prerequisite. So calc or physics, if you're a junior applying to astrophysics, chemistry and biology, if you're a junior applying to biology and being strong in algebra. So if you have met that basic coursework and you have some interest in science um, and, and learning in general, kind of learning for the sake of learning. If you have curiosity and a desire to learn, that is adequate preparation for going into SSP. You don't have to have uh, physics, I mean, astrophysics specifically. You don't have to have uh, done lab work in biochemistry. You don't have to have done research before. We want people to come in who are ready for this experience, not necessarily who've already had this experience. So as long as you've met the class prerequisites and you want, if it sounds exciting to you, you love science, that's the type of person we're looking for. So it's really, a, it is quite a subjective application process. You get to write essays, uh, short answers about whatever you want. Basically we have very broad questions and you can demonstrate really anything about yourself that shows your love for science and your love for learning. Um, 
So applications are reviewed holistically. So we do ask for test scores if you have taken them. People get very hung up on test scores and it's really probably the, the most boring part of uh, your application. Uh, we do ask for transcripts from your school and that kind of lays the groundwork for where you are academically. But beyond that, your teacher recommendations or who it could be any two adults really. We realize that this year, if you have online school, you might not really know your teachers. So asking a former teacher or some other mentor or coach is fine. Um, and your essays, so your words and your teacher's words about you is really much more interesting than your, your test scores. So um, we want you to answer honestly, kind of be yourself in those short answers. Don't be afraid to be yourself and don't feel like you have to have a, a long che checklist of uh, accomplishments showing that you've already done all of these things that you're going to be learning this summer. You just have to come in with that, that passion for science. Um, one person asked about um, how did you decide whether to apply to Astro or Biochem? Did any of you, were, was anyone on the fence? And you, can you talk about how did you decide? Go ahead and uh, how, did, how did you make that choice? Which program, which project to apply to? Uh, so for me, it came down to having a bit more experience with Biochem just because at my high school, um, all freshmen have to take biology and all sophomores have to take chemistry. And so I had already had like a little bit of experience with, um, bio <clears throat> sorry, I, I'm, I got something in my throat. Um, I already had a little, <clears throat> sorry, I already had a little bit of experience with biology and chemistry. Um, and also my brother is in med school. So I was very lucky to be, to be able to have like someone to ask questions ab about these kinds of things too, because whenever I was curious. Whereas astronomy, I didn't really have very much experience with. Um, I self-studied a physics, physics class because it didn't fit with my schedule. It's a really long story. Um, but other than that, I didn't really have much experience. And while I do love all science, I do have a slight preference for astronomy specifically. Um, but with that being said, for me, it was an option of, okay, do I want to have like my first experience with astronomy or do I want to go even more in depth with biochemistry? And I ended up coming down to astronomy and I ended up learning how um, computer science is involved with astro astro astronomical, astronomical research. Um, I got to operate a telescope for the first time and it was just an experience that I wouldn't trade for the world. Um, with that being said, if I had the opportunity to, be, to do both, I would have done both probably. Um, I can add on something really quick. Um, when I was applying, I also did not know whether to um, do astrophysics or biochemistry because I had experience with neither. Um, but I was in um, both a, an AP chemistry class and a physics E class. So I kind of had like the perspective of kind of like the directions of either and both. Um, it came down to the fact that my um, physics teacher was actually offering like an after class, um, an after class program where he would be like teaching a few concepts about radio astronomy. And so I decided to check that out. And because of that, it kind of convinced me to go toward the astrophysics direction. Um, that in addition to the fact that I did not really have any experience with like the, um, the processes we would use in astrophysics, um, like the campus. So I didn't really know that much about astronomy in the first place. And I didn't have that much of a background in computer science and I was looking for a challenge. So I decided to go to for the astrophysics route. And um, I don't regret choosing astrophysics, but if I could do SSP again, I'd love to try out biochemistry. Yeah, I think most people who do SSP wish they could do SSP again, but it's, uh, it's a one-shot deal. So you do have to make that astro or biochem decision up front. Um, and I, I think, I like that you both po pointed out that you went, you applied to where you had a little less experience or you didn't really have experience in either one. So you don't need to already be an expert in that field. Um, well, I think you said you want, you were looking for a challenge. So people who are applying and perhaps you've done 
uh, a lot of work in biochemistry, but astrophysics is new and you can, you can kind of talk about how you want to try something new and kind of expand um, your experiences, that's a perfectly legitimate thing to put in your application. Um, let's shift gears a little bit. There's a question remaining about, it's a, it's a big question, what was it like to do SSP online? So um, if you want to take a, a stab at that, uh, we can answer that in big ways and small ways um, about the workload overall, what the pace of your day was like, what the pace of the five weeks was like, or however you want to uh, tackle that question. What was SSP online like for you? Um, well, sorry, I can start, I guess. It was um, almost the same um, workload <laughs> as in person. It was very, very hard, at least for me. It was still very challenging. And in the first like two or like first week or so, it was very hard for me to get adjusted to the workload. And it was also like, very stressful because you get very intimidated by everyone so it's like a learning curve and you have to learn that um it's okay to like not understand everything so ssp online was very difficult at first but once you get used to it it's like very nice and you get used to the sleepless nights because you really don't you still don't sleep even though you're not in person you're not going to sleep much and you're still going to be confused but you will still have that support system that you have when you are in person, um, the faculty is very supportive and always checks in. And it, I feel like it was a little bit more independent that when you are in person, you aren't really taught, at least for Astro, you weren't really taught everything. You kind of had to work on your own, see the lesson plans they posted for us um, on Canva. And you had to like work with yourself, but you also had to learn to reach out. So it's a little bit harder online because you have to make sure you know yourself and you're able to ask for help and you're able to be like, hey teammates, can we please meet on Zoom? Or like, hey guys, can we talk on the Discord so we can please like figure out how to do this problem set because I'm very confused or ask questions on the Slack. So even though it was a little bit harder, I felt then if it was in person, you're still gonna have like a great time and you're gonna spend a lot of hours on Zoom, but it's like part of the package but you shouldn't like worry because it's still going to be like a really great experience and you are going to have time to do things besides the research project. But yeah, sorry, someone else can go. So I want to add on to that because uh, when SSP started, I was kind of shocked at how organized and smoothly it all went. I mean, there were very few technological problems. I remember school got cut really quickly and we were basically done with school a month early because no one could transition. But SSP was set up really nicely. And there are also a few benefits to being online, like asking people questions like your TAs or your professors. At least for me, it would be easier to type out a question than to ask them in person because I'm a little shy. Um, also, like reaching out to people. You can talk to people in big group chats and stuff and get to know people from different campuses, which you wouldn't be able to do if that was in person. And I think there are a few benefits that just go unstated about being online. And it really ends up being somewhat equal. I know in person would be a little better but you get most of what the program gives you when it's online. And like to add a little bit more to that, like we still were able to like form the authentic relationship with each other. Cause like, I was super surprised. Cause like usually the way Zooms have been going, like there's a lot of awkward silence and people don't talk, but like even the first day, like everyone just like, we had like the chemistry and like we all were able to like still keep conversations going on in Zoom and like still connect with each other like inside our work play period like even outside like after our scheduled hours we still were able to like communicate and like work on our projects and also like play games with each other so it worked out pretty well and for biochem even though you don't get to um, collect your own data you still do a lot of the authentic work that makes SSP what it is like designing your own enzyme and like designing your own pesticide so you don't really lose out in that aspect. And as other people mentioned, the social aspect is also still really good because even though it might seem like it'd be hard to make friends over Zoom, it's still definitely doable as like they build in parts of the schedule for like social times. And then like even outside of like our scheduled Zoom hours, you can still um, message other people on like the, you know, Slack, uh, Discord, things like that. And also just meeting other people from a lot of different campuses that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. 
Oh yeah, uh, with what Jenny said about biochem, I think the same also applies with astrophysics. So I think normally uh, for astro, like on campus, they would use the computers that are at the um, on the campus. Um, so instead, we were the ones who like downloaded the software that is like being used to like analyze um, telescope images and stuff. And so I think that kind of brought in like an, a pro in my book. Um, where we got to like be more um, engaged and we could like um, get more familiar with like the software um, because we would have it like 24 seven on our own laptops. And um, just like the entire process, it was kind of a struggle getting like used to the software that we used during the program um, to like conduct like experimentation and stuff. But it was really worth it because um, we not only got to like do the project with the software on our own computers but we also like got to keep the software after the program and so that was super cool um so now i just have like a bunch of astrophysics software on my computer that i can do like astrophysics work with at, at any time all right um i'm gonna shift gears for a moment and ask some of the technical questions about financial aid and applying if any of our attendees have questions, um, additional questions that you wanna put in the Q&A box or in the chat, we will have time for some more questions, but let me shift over to uh, financial aid. So for US applicants, your, your application to apply to get into the program is due on March 5th, but you don't need to submit a financial aid application at this point in time. People who are admitted to SSP, when you get that notification, you'll get instructions for having your parents apply for financial aid at that time. So there's no need to worry about that now. If you're admitted, um, you'll submit a financial aid form and some uh, financial, your parents will submit do documents to support that. Last year, half of the attendees received um, some financial aid and 33 of the 144 people last year received full aid. And for some that included also getting support with um, technology. So um, it's hard to do SSP on a, a, an old Chromebook. You need a little bit more computing power than that. Some people had uh, school laptops that would not support adding any new software. So when there was a need to upgrade technology, we tried to help with that. So it is possible to attend SSP at no cost. And you don't have to worry about that in, until you get in. So there's no, no worries about that as you apply. And our application process is need blind. So the people who are reviewing your application are not, um, they're, they're not knowing if you're gonna ask for financial aid, if your parents are gonna apply or not and how much they're gonna ask for. So that's completely independent of um, being re reviewed to get into the program. And um, let's see. Oh, I lost the other question. Oh, someone had asked about um, first generation. There's been some conversation about that. That's not really, um, I mean, it's not really a critical part of the application process and different places use it for different colleges and other programs use it for different uh, reasons. So we collect a lot of demographic data. And one of the things that we ask in our main form is about your parents' level of education. And so if they finished high school or finished college or have a, a higher education degree. So we just ask that as, uh, along with everything else, we ask you, you know, where you go to school, do you live in a rural or urban or suburban area? Um, all kinds of questions like that. Um, so let's see, we're gonna, we have a couple more questions coming in. How many applicants are selected each year and how many students will each mentor have? So I'll talk a little bit about how, how things um, have worked in the past. We're not sure what our admission rate will be this year because we've added an Astro program. And we also have seen kind of our application numbers kind of be all up and down. You know, usually it, every year it follows a nice little curve and this year it's, it's high and then it's low and then it's high. And so we're not sure what to expect when all is said and done. Um, so typically we have in prior years, our admissions rate has been around 10 or 11%. So that can sound kind of discouraging. Um, but I would encourage you all to not really think about the numbers in that way. So you can control whether you apply or not. You can't control whether a thousand other people apply or not. So you really just need to focus on your own application and not worry about it, how many other people might be applying. Um, so each program has 36 participants. So a program is 
um, a, a project on a campus. And we're going to still use the word campus, even though we're not actually going to any of these places. We use that to, to call, we'd have to, to group people and call them something anyway. So we're still using those campus terms. So you'll be assigned to a campus. And our third Astro program doesn't quite have a name yet. It's not pinned to a location. So we'll come up with some name for the, that third campus. So you have 36 participants. And we do try and make a good uh, mix of participants within that 36. So we're not going to put all of the computer experts, computer science people in one and all the physics people in the other. And we're going to try and blend everyone in. So there's diversity in academic skills. There's diversity in where you are from in the country or in the world. Um, and we try and make a, a good um, mix within each of those 36. Each program has four TAs, so teaching assistants, and those are current or recent grads from college or currently in college. And then there will be three senior faculty, so two academic directors, a, a, an academic director and associate, and then a site director who's kind of in, in charge of logistics and making sure everyone is where they need to be in the schedule and everyone's feeling okay and going along and not getting too overwhelmed. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. Um, I don't see any other new questions coming in. Uh, panelists, do any of you have anything that you want to add? Either a question that you answered in the the Q and A box. Is there anything you want to expand on, Will? Um. Yeah. So I accidentally um answered the question in the chat before I could answer it live. Um. But someone did ask. Um. If uh, we could, if we would recommend SSP for someone who is not sure they will pursue a career in STEM, um, so I answered it in the text, but I'd like to like um, kind of mm -hmm. elaborate live. Um, so I personally, personally, was not sure if I wanted to pursue a career in STEM before the program. Um, I've always been kind of like a STEM and humanities kind of guy, so um, I applied anyway, and I'm really glad that I did because. Um, I'm still not 100% sure if I do want to pursue a career in STEM, but I do know that whatever I do like pursue, there has to be like some sort of um, link to the skills that I learned through SSP, um, like the analytical skills, the le leadership skills, um, just like determination and perseverance in general. They apply to really anything. Um, and so whatever skills I learned in SSP, I'm sure that I'll be using them in whatever I decide to pursue. Um, in addition, for anyone who um, might be interested in science but doesn't know like what uh, type of science they want to do, um, I highly encourage you to try SSP. Um, there is a lot of opportunities for you to like learn more about different career fields. Like I think we had a guest speaker who was a computer scientist at Google, and there was like another uh, there was a professor of computer science, and he said afterward to. Um, just talk to everyone who was interested in computer science about like what next steps they should do if they were interested in continuing in that field. So there's so many opportunities to like learn whether science um, is something you want to pursue. And if you do want to pursue science, like what specific field in science you do want to pursue. Lots of resources. And I would add to that, um, we have quite an extensive alumni network. So SSP has been in, a, in operation since 1959. And we have alumni from all of those years, from 1959 to 2000. And um, not everyone has gone into science. So there's many alumni who are still active in SSP, um, whether it's on the board of trustees or on a committee or involved in other ways who are uh, not in STEM now at all for their career. We have several lawyers. We have people in finance and business. Um, and all types of sciences. So some people have gone into research, some people have gone into the uh, medical careers. Um, and so there's some people are school teachers. So there's really, um, it, it's not a requirement. You don't have to know that you want to have a, a career in STEM when you go to SSP, it will inform your decision. So I think you'll come out of SSP knowing that you do want, definitely want to pursue a career in research, or maybe you don't, and that's okay. So there's there's no commitment beforehand that you you have to know that this is what you want to do. It's kind of a good testing point to to figure out if doing research and doing science is for you or not. And if it's not, then that's completely fine. 
and you are still a part of the SSP family and you are still welcome to be, you know, an active and involved uh, alumni, even if you do not go into a STEM field. And we also, we do have guest speakers from all kinds of sciences and some of the biochemistry, the biochemistry programs got to hear from people doing research on Mars and we try and open it up so you're not hearing just about what you're, um, you're studying and doing research on, but we want to give you kind of a broad um, view of lots of different careers that are interesting. And uh, some of our guest speakers are alumni and some are not. We had one person who is, um, she's been a guest speaker for both projects for a few years. She coordinates and plans like the, the New York City transit system. So she's, um, she's not in STEM, I guess it's, it's perhaps a little bit related to, to science maybe, but she's in this kind of logistics and public transportation field and she's a, a great speaker. So there's um, a lot of room for learning in a lot of different fields. Also something that I just wanted to add, um, I've also been a very heavy science and humanities person. Um, like for instance, uh, right now I'm on a gap year, but last year, my senior year, I did dual enrollment and I took music history, anthropology, ethics, and physics one throughout my two gap, throughout my two um, semesters of dual enrollment. And like, that's only one natural science and one like social science there. Um, so you won't be alone in that. There were a lot of people there who were um, both STEM and humanity. There were, most people were mostly with STEM, but um, the amount of people who were also inter interested in humanities was pretty sizable. And also SSP will give you a better idea of whether or not science is really for you. Like for instance, there was one student who really loved astronomy, but realized that he hated computer science horribly. Um, so much so, so that his water bottle ended ended up getting dented because of it. Um, but he did still really love astronomy. And so he figured, okay, I'll, I'll continue studying physics in college. But then he decided, no, I, as much as I love astronomy, I can't do computer science. And so he ended up switching to um, political science as his major. Um, we also, uh, I, I'm, friends with a, I'm friends with a student who is currently double majoring in art and environmental science and she always knew that she wanted to study art but SSP really showed her just how much she really loves science and um, you know both of these outcomes are okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with realizing oh I actually don't like science or with, with realizing oh I actually do like science like there's nothing wrong with that and SSP can really help you with that and I thought um, that, that might be a good addition to put in there. Okay, we have a question about, um, I said earlier that since this is a group project, it's that the SSP kind of owns the research. You cannot um, finish SSP and then publish your work, but there is an opportunity to go further. So your work at SSP can be the foundation for uh, you to take that research project further. Um, so it would be with the, the permission of your academic director and perhaps with their guidance, they um, you could go a step further and use your work at SSP to launch you in uh, a different direction or something added onto that project. And then that work that's your own can be uh, research that you do um, independently and that could po possibly be uh, publishable. But we ask that everyone kind of just check in with your academic director uh, with questions about that, just so we're clear that you're not violating any intellectual property rights or anything with that. Um, but there are opportunities. There are definitely alumni who have um, gone on and done further research after their time at SSP and have done really well with that. Um, there's also a question about getting in as an international applicant. Um, for some international applicants, um, it is a little bit um, harder to get in just because we have so many more applicants for, from China and India, especially. And we say that on our website, we get a ton of applicants. We could fill the entire um, SSP each summer with just India and China, but we're not going to do that because we want the program to be diverse. So we do um, kind of intentionally limit any particular group. So we're not going to admit everyone from one country and then omit 
uh, not admit people from other countries. So we do try and um, have a balanced and diverse group. So um, for other than India and China, it's about the same. So if you're applying from any other country, your chances of getting in the admission rate is similar to what it is for US applicants. And someone asked about um, SAT scores. Um, if you have an SAT score, do you have to put in your additional PSA or your prior PSAT score? If you have scores, we would like you to submit them. Um, if you don't have scores, especially with this past year, if your SAT was canceled um, or for any reason you weren't able to take SAT or ACT this year, it's no problem at all. We do not require that applicants take any particular test. test. We just ask that if you have taken the PSAT, SAT, ACT, or APs that you um, report those scores and send us the, full, the score reports, the unofficial score reports. Um, so yeah, there, I don't, I would ask you to submit your PSAT and your SAT. Um, if you don't, we won't know, but we hope that you'll, you know, give all the information that we've asked for. And I'd like to also just emphasize that if you don't have test scores or um, because of the, the situation this year with the pandemic, or if you're not worried that your scores aren't perfect and you're a little bit hesitant to share them, please do share them. It's, we don't rank applicants on scores. Um, so it's, it's really, you know, we, we ask for it, but we don't put a whole lot of emphasis on it. Let's see, what else do we have coming in through questions? Let's see, I'm going back to the pre-asked questions. All right. Panelists, do any of you see any question that we've overlooked or that we wanna go back and revisit? And attendees, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat or the Q&A box. All right, I'm not seeing anything new. All right, well, I guess we have answered all the questions. Um, do any of the panelists have anything that they'd like to uh, wrap up with? Um, anything that we overlooked or that you were hoping to share or any follow-up that you can give to anyone, any other answer that we, or any other question that we've already come across? I guess I would like to emphasize, as you mentioned um, earlier in the webinar, the like, even though I think the application is due in about two weeks from now, you definitely still have time because I, I just, I did mine in less than two weeks and it was okay. As long as you put in the effort, you know, I, you can do it. Yes. Yes. You can ask your teachers on Monday, ask two teachers or any two adults, if they would um, write an evaluation for you. Um, ask your registrar or registrar or counselor or whoever at school sends transcripts, ask them to send that over. And then you still have two weeks to write your short answers. So your part is due on uh, March 5th at midnight Pacific time, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we don't shut the application off at exactly that minute because I'm probably asleep. I might be asleep at, would be for me at 3 a.m. So you might squeeze out an extra hour, a couple hours before we shut it off. If transcripts are still arriving for a few days after that deadline, that's okay. So if you ask for your transcript and evaluations this week and they haven't gotten there yet, we will still take them a few days after. So your deadline is March 5th. Your teachers have a few more days after that. So their, their deadline is a little bit more flexible. Um, so I would encourage, um, if you haven't started yet, it's not too late. The, the main form is kind of long, but it's all questions that you know the answer to, the name of your school and um, uh, all those other, you know, your, your parents' occupation and things like that. So that's uh, a long form, but simple answers. The short answers, really a lot of people stress and try and think about, well, what they, what they can best put in their short answers to get in, but it's really just be yourself. Juliana. Um, yeah, for the short answers, um, a lot of people think there's like specific things you need to write about, 
um, especially about like, what do you like to do or what do you do in your free time or any topic you want to talk about. And it's really like, just try to show like your passions for the things that you do. Like I applied to astrophysics, but I talked about mostly chemistry and my why um, one of my favorite topics that I like to learn about. And it you don't really have to show like only your interest for STEM if you have other interests. I talked about dancing and I talked about other activities that I do, but I made sure to also show why I'm so like passionate about wanting to do SSP and what that I really wanted to experience something else. Even though I'm not very passionate about physics, I was really interested in pursuing or like researching in astrophysics. So don't stress too much about what specific things you need to write about, but just try to be yourself and really show admissions like different parts of your personality and different things about yourself. And also um, for the last essay that you can write about different topics or you can choose one, it's always just good to like think about something you want to write about or that you show about yourself. Some people have like extraordinary circumstances that they want to talk about, but they aren't sure if they can. And if you have any of those, you are free to talk about those as well. Admissions is usually like really understanding about those things and it really lets them see like who you are and puts like the classes you've taken and the opportunities you have or haven't had into context. So it really helps like them see why you've done certain things or why you haven't done certain things. Yeah, it's really important to just be yourself. Um, the admissions committee, they want to know you as a person. Um, that just seeing a transcript and a, a resume or activities list is kind of, everyone is kind of, you know, blends together after a while. But if you talk about something that's just specifically about you, a story from your childhood or something about your family or your school, um, and again, it, it doesn't have to be about STEM. There's places to talk about what else you like to do when you're not doing schoolwork. So let the, the, the real you shine through and that will be more memorable to the admissions people. So don't, don't try and craft what they want to hear. Just let us hear what you're really interested in and what, what makes you you. We've had a couple more questions. Um, so this is something uh, Mateo wants to answer, but I'm sure you all can answer. Um, what is what's the SSP community like post SSP? And I'll start by saying that one of the silver linings for being online is maintaining that connection from participant to alumni. So usually when people are in person on campus on departure day, everyone gets on the bus to go to the airport or gets in their car with their parent and everyone just goes back to home and then you're away from SSP. But when it was online, we found, I think a lot of the participants found that chatting and interacting online on the last day of SSP could kind of continue. There was a, a lot of spillover. So you could keep chatting with your friends um, and even with the, the TAs and the, the faculty after departure day, you could still be um, continuing those conversations online. And that's not to say that um, in-person groups haven't had online communities and they do it's just you know it's it's a way to kind of build off of that in-person experience whereas this year it seemed to just really flow um, from my perspective but what do you all think what was the the community of SSP like after you left SSP? So I really wanted to answer this question because I think post SSP um, is very underrated I mean you make friends that I think now eight months after the program ended I can say they're long-lasting friendships and I'll talk to people from SSP every day and we have monthly reunions and it's all great. And SSP also offers a lot of uh, opportunities after SSP. One of them is SSP Connect where you get a mentor who had gone through the program and it just keeps you within the SSP community and you can learn a lot from someone who had gone to college um, and gone through the same experiences you have. And then I think the best thing is that everyone is still looking to maintain these same friendships so our Discord server with everyone who went to Indiana is surprisingly active still. It's been, like I said, eight months and we're all still talking to each other, keeping up with what's going on. And I think it's really great to be part of this community. Um, I agree with Mateo. Um, I am still in contact with my SSP teammates um, for my research project. We still talk every day and I'm in contact with a few other people from SSP. Um, we have like a very active Discord. Um, I would say the SSP Connect program has been extremely helpful for me just navigating the college process. Um, there's like a form you fill out and then you talk about like your interests 
like what kind of career you want to have, what colleges you want to go to. And SSP will pair you up with an alumni who kind of fits those categories um, if they can find one. And um, my mentor was super helpful just with the college process. And um, quite, or sorry, SSP was also very helpful, like connecting me to programs and scholarships that I wouldn't have known about otherwise, like uh, QuestBridge. And so I just, um, I really think that SSP is super supportive of like the participants even after the program is over. So yeah, I agree with Mateo that SSP, post SSP is underrated. Well, and I'd like to thank um, all of the panelists today. They're all alumni who are still involved in SSP, even after they've uh, left their, their summer um, program. They have all volunteered to help with this today and have volunteered in other ways to help with um, outreach and admissions. We have other committees. Um, we have another group of young alumni who helped with the um, with the mentorship program. And we also have um, several who helped with the redesign of our website this past year. So there's lots of ways that alumni can stay involved and help SSP be a better organization. Um, we also have, let me just put this in the chat before we follow up. If anyone else wants to follow on either of those, I'm just gonna put in a couple of ways that you can stay connected with us. You can follow us on Discord, or join the Discord server if you haven't already. Um, after today, thanks to Juliana for some of her guidance and getting us up to speed on Instagram. We're gonna do um, a question and answer there. Thank you, Juliana. And my daughter has also helped me figure out Instagram a little bit better. So if you didn't answer your question today, feel free to, to find us on Instagram, follow us there and ask your questions there. And also if you have specific questions about your application, someone had um, trouble logging into their form, um, questions like that, um, email to admissions at ssp.org. That way one of our staff can look up your um, application form and help you figure out what's going on. Does anyone else um, want to talk about anything to wrap up or specifically what it's like to be part of SSP after SSP? Uh, sure. Um... I'm probably just going to parrot Mateo and Will, but I just wanted to emphasize that even though for me it's been a year and eight months since the program, that we also keep very much in touch. Um, and with the new uh, SSP admissions Discord server, um, we've also started uh, getting in touch with some of the people from the 2020 year. Um, yeah, it, same thing as Mateo and Will, but I just wanted to emphasize a longer time frame. And, and we are, th this is kind of more for the panelists, but the attendees, you're welcome to hear this too. We're going to um, build on our uh, success with Discord and expand that to um, all alumni. So we'll have just an alumni Discord server eventually where people from all years um, who want to, to jump into Discord can, can do that there. So you can connect with um, people from uh, all years uh, from SSP. And also let me add that um, most of our TAs are SSP alumni. So that's a way that you panelists and applicants, you can think of staying involved in the future. About four years after you are a participant, you can come back to, TA, uh, to be a TA for SSP. So um, when I said you can't do it twice, you really can because you can come back and, and do SSP as a TA if you want to. So I hope that's in the back of everyone's mind. And that's just another way that our, our community stays connected. We do have TAs who are not alumni, but the majority this year will be um, SSP alumni. All right, well, we're about at the top of the hour and I don't see any new questions coming in. So I'd encourage everyone to um, ask additional questions on Discord or later today on Instagram or email admissions at ssp.org. And I would like to thank all six of the panelists. You have all done a great job in sharing your experiences. And I know that the um, attendees like to hear directly from you um, what it was like to, to attend SSP. So I thank each of you for your time today and for sharing your thoughts. And with that, we will uh, close out the webinar. Thank you all. And thank all the attendees uh, for your participation today as well. Bye-bye.